What's going on, Jerome's Week 7 NFL action is in the books. So here is how the NFL playoffs are shaping up if the season ended today, which is a turn of phrase that I kind of get sick of, but yeah, whatever. Right now, right meow. The Vikings would be the seventh seed. They're in the playoffs. They would open up Wild Card Weekend at Tampa Bay. So you know we're ain't getting a call down there. So I may as well just nap on the season. You, you know that they a thousand percent want Tom Brady to repeat, but or at least Tom Brady gets a Super Bowl and then loses to I don't know. Uh, I, I guess the Bills, his old nemesis. But by the way. Look at the AFC. We'll, we'll get to the Vikings here in a second, but look at the AFC playoff picture right now. Like, AFC has been day drinking. Like, who would have predicted the Bengals would be in the one seed after whipping the Ravens' ass in their building, by the way? And then the Raiders, the Raiders, with Rich uh, uh, sci- Sciatica, whatever, uh, as their head coach. That's crazy. And Derek Carr. But, so, we Vikings fans, we talk about how. Kirk Cousins is constantly disrespected. Derek Carr has low key been playing some phenomenal football. I don't understand it. It's crazy. But yeah, the Bengals and the Raiders are one. Two. I don't think they've ever been one and two or in anything except for maybe the draft. Whatever. Uh, Tennessee Titans are getting off the mat. They're like, they remembered. Oh yeah. Hey, our offense is giving the ball to, to Derrick Henry. Rocket to the wheels fall off. Hold up for the Bills at four and two. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Uh, five Ravens uh, licking their wounds, man. It's a little rough. And then got the Chargers six. The Browns at seven. And then l- look at all these teams that everyone and their mom thought would be in the mix. You had the Steelers. Uh, yeah, they're definitely falling down because Big Ben is a corpse of himself. Uh, hey, 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 Mike Tomlin. Come on home, man. Although I do want an offensive mind to head coach next. And Tomlin, of course, comes from a defensive background. But I don't care. It's Mike Tomlin. Whatever he can, you can hire a good offense coordinator that he'll eventually fire. Uh, I mean, he he retired Bruce Arians. Anyway, the Patriots. Yeah, this is not a good Patriots team. Like I understand Mac Jones is doing a little summon summon. Uh, I understand they ran up the score against the Jets, but uh, it's also the Jets. Whatever. Uh, Colts had double digit wins last year, and Carson Wentz. <sighs> what they start out one and three or something like that. W- whatever. I mean, Carson Wentz. <laughs> Is playing better football, minus that one interception that he threw against the Niners. The Chiefs, man, the Chiefs are a bad team. I think we have to come to terms with that. The Chiefs are actually bad. Like the like we've said before, the Chiefs are a six-man football team. Well, seven if you include Jumpin' Joe Thune, where you have Mahomes, you have Kelsey, you have Tyree Kill, you have Chris Jones, you have uh, Honey Badger, you have uh, Orlando Brown, and I guess Thune. That's it. But you have a collection of uh, just – you don't have a team. This is not reminiscent of the Super Bowl team two years ago. This is not. Anyway, uh, the Broncos started out 3-0. Uh, not so much. Yeah, yeah, not so much. And they got the Jets, Jaguars, Dolphins. Yeah, everyone expected that. But, man, if this holds up, it's crazy. Also, from the Vikings' perspective – yeah, you're three and three. Yeah, they're, you're the seven seed. Blah 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 blah. You are what your record says you are. But look at the three losses. You gave it away against the one seed Bengals, who you know current one seed Bengals in their building at the end of the game. You gave it away against the one seed Cardinals in their building at the end of the game, and then you lost at home to the Browns, who are also uh, in, in the playoff picture. So whatever, like uh, getting over moral victories. But I mean, those are. Is there such a it's oxymoronic to say quality losses, but those three are, I guess, quality losses, even though you barely beat the Lions, you barely beat the Panthers, and uh, yeah, the Seahawks are not great. Although you did play at Seattle with Russell Wilson, so for that, we thank you. I mean, Seahawks are in trouble. Seahawks have zero draft picks, and Russ wants to leave. Uh, he wanted to leave this offseason. Uh, I think he's laying the groundwork to say deuces, but Seattle might be bad for a long, long time. It's rough. I mean, Pete's going to retire. Pete's 70. And John Schneider is just not good. Anyway, so look at the NFC (laughs) playoffs. Long way to get to the NFC playoffs. Cardinals have won. Whatever. Just, hey, 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 you're not going to go undefeated. Just beat the Packers on Thursday. Can you do that? I mean, the Packers aren't going to have their due coordinator. They're probably not going to have Devonta Adams. So no excuses. Just win. Plus, I bet 
everything on the money line, even though it's like negative whatever. Uh, two seed, you got the Bucks taking care of the NFC South. Sure, you got the greasy, grimy Green Bay Packers, allegedly at 6-1, and one, just tiptoeing through the tulips like a bunch of a-holes. Yeah, congratulations on getting every single team's worst effort. Washington should have won that game. Uh, how many trips can you go inside the 30 and not come away with any points? That was very Vikings-esque. It's ridiculous. That This Packers team reminds me of the 11-0 Steelers. Oh, by the way, the 11-0 Steelers from last year are basically the team this year. They're just not good. They ain't good. Sorry. Or the 6-0 Vikings from 2018. That That's about it. Wait, no. Was it? No, 2016. Nailed it. Uh, then you got the Cowboys 5-1. Probably should be 6-0, and except, of course, Tom Brady and the Bucks got themselves a nice, nice call week one. Got the Rams at 6-1. and one, Very tough team. Uh, imagine being 6-1 and, one and also uh, just <laughs> having zero chance to win your division. It's rough. And plus, they're already a game down against Arizona in the head-to-head. -head. You got the Saints back. Jameis. Seamus Jameis. The Saints are not a good team, but they're 4-2. So, that's whatever they're. The Vikings 3-3, three three, the best 3-3 three three team in NFL history. And it it's very early but if you look at the NFC in terms of wild card teams, it's basically an eight team race for seven spots, which as a Vikings fan, I mean, you're still not looking forward to that. But I mean, beyond the Falcons who have gotten off the mat playing some quality football uh, ever since London, they're like, oh, yeah, hey, we should get the ball to our immensely talented rookie Kyle Pitts. Just throw it to him. Matt Ryan, remember not to be garbage. There you go. Uh, so they're back in the derby at three and three. But if you look, I mean, the Bears at three and four. Is anyone expecting the Bears to make a run? No. Is anyone expecting the Panthers to make a run? Even if they trade for Deshaun, by the way. Uh, yeah, the good vibes of Sam Darnold at three and zero. Oh, not so much anymore. Uh, also, McCaffrey's still on IR. I don't think he's coming back anytime soon. Enjoy Amir Abdullah, by the way. The Niners. The Niners might be in trouble. The Niners might really, really be in trouble because Trey Lance is hurt. Garoppolo is dinged up. The uh, Kittle is already on IR. Uh. Uh, by the way, Kyle Shanahan, outside of that Super Bowl year, the Niners haven't been good. Like, they have a good roster and are certainly capable, but it's been five years, man. Uh, I I get that Shanahan and Lynch are sort of like this, but I don't know. That's rough. Uh, Washington, two and five. Now we're getting into two and five teams. Yeah, Washington Eagles are, are certainly not getting into the Derby. So, uh, again, a little bit too early to say, but is this coming down to eight teams in the NFC? Because like I said, there's a really thick line between the Falcons and then the Bears and the Panthers and the Niners. There it is right now. But if you look through, the Vikings have nine games against the top 11 teams in the NFC. If that's not controlling your own destiny, I, I don't know what is. So you should have beat the Cardinals in their building. That would have been nice to have. You got two games against the Packers. You play the Cowboys. You play the Rams a day after Christmas. You play the Bears twice. And for that, we thank you. <laughs> you play the Panthers. You play the Niners. So you got nine games against the top 11 seeds in your conference. And if you look at it, uh, no, we're already not into, hey, we'll settle for wild card mode. Look at the division. All right, like we said, the pa the Packers are massively, massively overrated. Like if you take away Devontae Adams, I mean, what else is their offense? Uh, by the way, Rodgers average depth of target. It's a lot of, a lot of it is smoke and mirrors. A lot of it is reputation. A lot of it is... Maybe getting favorable calls. I don't know. I I, I don't know. But you, you're down two games. It's very early in the season. You have 11 weeks to go. You have 11 games for the Vikings. You have 10 for the Packers. And you, you play the Packers twice. So you can easily make up that ground. Also, the Packers schedule... I was gonna uh, I was gonna say the Packers schedule gets tough. Except they get to play the Chiefs maybe without Patrick Mahomes. God. God whatever. 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 Uh, and then... All right, so if you take division off the table, which, again, I'm not ready to do, making up the wild card, certainly could do it. You got 11 weeks left to go. You play the Rams head-to-head. -head, so, yes, the Vikings can significantly enhance their position. I, I think that would they put playoff odds at 40% for the Vikings. I think that's massively low, massively low. Like we said, there, it's an eight-team race in the NFC, it appears to be, at, at this time. And the fact that the Vikings do control their own destiny, nine games against the top 11, how is that not 70%? Oh, yeah, it's because it's the Vikings. <laughs> and I fully get that. Looking at the schedule, it is extremely daunting. You got the Cowboys at home, week eight, Sunday night football, waiting all day for Sunday night. But if you take care of business there, the Ravens, 
The Ravens were being held together by duct tape. I think they got thoroughly exposed by the Bengals. And I think the Ravens are a lot closer to the team that got whooped by the Bengals, almost lost to the Lions, than they are the team that beat down the Chargers. I just really think so. The Chargers can get got on a given day. They're an extremely talented side, and they got the greasy, grimy Green Bay Packers. Hopefully, Patrick Peterson will be back by then. This four-game stretch is everything. It is everything coming on up. And, of course, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Starts with Dallas. Bring it on. Dak, hey, how's that calf? How's that golden calf? Isn't it great? Cool. But Vikings control their own destiny. If they don't make the playoffs, if they don't make some noise, if they don't uh, challenge for the division, it's all on them. It is all on them. But uh, your thoughts and our thoughts. Take a look at the NFL playoff picture. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. Want to support that work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.